My in-studio guest is Dutch Bradley on this impact segment. So if you would, take us to the time shortly after your senior year in high school where, as you say, you started to go down a dark road. Yeah, the the anger was very explosive, and I know that there's a lot of people that identify with this. When I speak with men uh, especially, they identify with just having this. Uh, I can take it up to a point, and then I explode. So I was violent. Fists were going through doors. Fists were going through walls. Um, anyone who didn't go along with what I was doing, thinking or saying or contested what I was doing, it would become a explosive conversation. And the incredible thing for me is, is that um, – that would send me into a world where I met a buddy in Atlanta, Georgia, who was actually from Jersey, and I noticed that he was making a lot of money selling weed, marijuana. And that was never my thing. Growing up as an athlete, only losers did drugs. So the the, the incredible thing was is that I got involved in doing that, and even though I believed that it was just for losers, I somehow validated myself because I wasn't a user. And because I wasn't a user, I didn't identify with being a loser. And, of course, we know how that story turns out. I became a loser. Uh, but thank God, sometimes you have to lose in order to win. Mm. So you became involved with actually selling drugs, peddling drugs. Yeah, you know, it was, it was marijuana to begin with, but then that wasn't moving fast enough and making enough money. So that transitions to the cocaine game and then you know this is back in the late 80s early 90s so now the crack cocaine uh thing hits and again understand i'm not a user i don't even have the excuse of saying i was under the influence i was just a young entrepreneur who wanted to engage in this illegal business of narcotics because really because i had lost focus and lost hope for the dreams and passions that i had as a young boy growing up did you make a lot of money? Didn't make millions, uh, but I was able to make tens of thousands. And uh, back then, tens of thousands went a lot further than it does today. Especially in your, your being an early 20s. You're yeah. A young man. Very young man. I think the bigger thing was is that, you know, it was having the flexibility of travel. Uh, you know, I was flying across the country uh, at 19, 20 years old. Part of my story was is that I would fly with cocaine on my body, saran wrapped around me. I loved the risk and where I wasn't getting the high of using, there was definitely a high associated with getting away with doing it. And so that was ultimately what really fueled me to do the things that I was doing. I took some risks that when I look back at it, I'm just saying that was just, that wasn't smart. You know, that was just the dumbest thing that you could do. Give us an example. Well, an example would be putting on a double breasted suit with a, you know, a pound and a half of marijuana strapped around your waist with cocaine, you know, saran wrapped down your legs and uh, sitting on the airplane. And as you sit down, feeling the bags pop and all of a sudden you smell like a forest of marijuana and you're sitting in first class. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, it's just it's just really so. It's that you just you can only compare it to Lucifer. I mean, you know, you got the best job in heaven and it's not enough. Right. So you start making all the worst decisions that you can make. And now you think that you're bigger and better than the one that created you. And so uh, without having a concept of God, I didn't think that I could ever get caught. Dutch, we have about three or four minutes. Let's talk up until the point where you did get caught. What happened? And then we come back and we'll talk about how your life really changed. So th there was a succession. I was arrested actually three times within a three-month window of time in two different states. The, the first time uh, really just added to my fury uh, because I got pulled over about 1 o'clock in the morning, had about 10 state police cars that surrounded me because I got into a fight with my girlfriend, pulled into an ATM to call her because we didn't have cell phones at that time, if you guys can go that far back. And when I pull in, a police car comes around the back because my windows are blacked all the way out and tinted. They report my license plate, and all of a sudden, the the uh, the drug task force who has me under investigation says, follow him wherever he goes. We're on our way. And they surround me. They find me with a handgun without a license or a permit. They find me with a bunch of paraphernalia in my trunk, but I didn't get a hard catch. So that just made me more defiant because I knew they hadn't really gotten me with anything. 
ended up doing a little bit of time on that. But then the grand jury comes to town, and now I've got four people testifying against me, and I'm looking at 12 to 24 years in a grand jury indictment, make bail on that, run another load from New York City down to Atlanta. I get popped in the Carolinas, and now they got me looking at 25 to 40 on top of a 12 to 24 and a 1 to 2. So I got myself in a bunch of trouble at the age of 22. So looking at a lot of years in prison, what actually were you convicted of? And talk about what the sentence was. They convicted me on the 1 to 2 for the gun with the paraphernalia, but it was a first-time offense. And I only had to do four to 23 months, meaning I spent four months in jail and I had the rest of that in a uh, probation period. The 12 to 24 is the grand jury indictment where my attorney is telling me to plead guilty. But by this time, I know God. And I'm reading my Bible about this homeboy named Jesus. And as I'm reading about Jesus, I'm discovering that the more I read, the more I understand, the more I understand, the more I begin to hear his voice. Here's what he said to me the day before I had to go to court. Luke 12, 12, when you stand in the synagogues and in the courtrooms, do not worry about what you will say, for it will not be who speaks, but the Holy Spirit will speak through you. 